Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another windy day in the canyon. So if you hear loud crashing noises, it's just the dead branches from the tree that's immediately above this metal building falling onto the metal building. Uh, it's that time of year where the wind comes and it stays as long as it feels like. What we have here is a is a hodgepodge. This, at its core, is a quick view, and the quick view is of the contents of this little bag right here. It, it becomes a little clearer if we grab uh, this little bag right here. Deluxe Fab, Drav Techs, these are the super short, I wanna say super short, because what I'm looking for, these were sent to me, these were provided not by Deluxe, but by certified friend of the Canyon, Shaker MT, who is looking to do a future build and I guess in the most extreme form of research, said, I'm gonna send you some drav techs so you can build them up, so you can put them on a rig. As I am, we're, we're in the midst of, of this, and it's on some 90 millimeter desert lizards, and they are not, they are not the shock. They, they, they don't work well in this, on this thing. And I think a big part of that is, I think the configuration of this, mess doesn't lend to a 90 millimeter shock. So I want something a little shorter. I had already purchased these guys some time ago. Regular viewers will remember the G-Made RSD scale shocks from months ago, and I still had not built them. I mean, they're still sealed in a little baggie. So this looked like a perfect opportunity to put in a review of the Dravtex. And I'm, I already feel good about it because, because of two things. I, I've looked through this bag a little. If you're wholly unfamiliar with how these shocks are done, they use a, a, little, a little mini spring, a little, little tiny guy there. And the way that the way the shock bodies go, and this is this is the part that I feel most promising about performance unseen. I mean, they're not even assembled, and they are. Can you see it? Yeah, they're snap ring, and no, I don't think anybody likes snap rings, but they are effective. The way the shock is assembled is you get your threaded body, and then this is the cap, and the cap's got a hole, and there's a recess, there's a for a screw there. So it uses the exact same rod end, top and bottom. I think I think that's brilliant. And I also think that it gives you some control over the length of the shock. You can fine tune the length of the shock. And that's where we come to a series of unnecessary disclosures. Look, at, look how nice the, the machining is on that. And the, the unnecessary disclosures are presented thusly. You'll notice here we've got We've got desert lizards, and I don't think they fit this application, but I don't feel negative about desert, des desert lizards otherwise. I have three rigs running desert lizards, and they are some of the more successful rigs here. Jolly Green, the 6x6, six six, runs six desert lizards all the way around, primarily for financial reasons, but also for fitment reasons. They fit really well on that rig. Zoidberg, the four-wheel steer, long wheelbase Capra, perhaps one of the most capable vehicles here runs the big long, I think they're 110 millimeter desert lizards with great success. So I don't have anything negative to say about desert lizards. They are inexpensive. And the reason I purchased these initially is because they are also inexpensive, $24 a pair. Dravtex are up there more in the, the stratospheric realm of I can't afford to put a shock like this on every rig because for the shocks and the spring set, you're right about $100 per set. I realize to a lot of people that's not an enormous expenditure of money, particularly when we have things out there like Pitbull Chronics at $90 a pair. And there are plenty of shocks out there, $50, $60 a pair. So the Draft Tech falls somewhere in the middle. The Traxxas GTS... Generally a fantastic bargain. Uh, part out houses like Jenny's RC. You can get a full set of GTS, Traxxas GTS for 40 bucks. You know, $20 a pair. 
And that's that's really tough to beat. We move to the additional disclosures. I don't think that in a crawler application, the damper is, this guy, is incredibly important. I don't think it's super critical. I think it has to it has to fulfill two primary qualifications. One, and this is all shocks regardless of what they're going on for me, don't leak. Just don't be leaky. So you have the opportunity to mount these upside down. They won't fit on this particular rig upside down, but on my other rigs they are run upside down. The oil lasts forever. Like they don't leak. And they're they're pretty good in this configuration. They're better than most axial shocks in terms of, especially if it's an RTR axial shock fresh out of the box, which is not me casting a disproportionate amount of shade onto axial shocks. I went through the whole fleet and counted out the shocks. They fall into six, six categories. GTS, Desert Lizards, Incision Shocks, which are what you get on Phoenix, Element shocks of all the varieties, whether they be the silver body, whether they be hard anodized, or whether they be the new gray plastic bodied, axial shocks, and what I just called other. I only have two vehicles on other. I've got an MST CMX J4 Jimny. It is on the MST option shocks, the LC70s. They're, they're fine. The piston holes in them are really big. I have to run diff oil in those shocks, so that's weird. And then my RC four-wheel drive Marlin is running Amazon shocks because they were black and they were basically photocopies of the, the white RC four-wheel drive oil dampers that come on there. And it's the same thing. I think I'm running... 5,000 CST in those, which is crazy. It's like 5,000 is uh, 500, 10. It's like 400 weight. So 400 weight oil in a shock. Seems crazy to me, but the holes in the pistons are just way too big. Most shocks here in the fleet. Oh, and I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to recap. 22 rigs total. Let's call this guy number 22 for the sake of argument because his dampers are not being counted. Five on GTS, three on Desert Lizards, three on Incision, five on Element, the two others that I mentioned, and three running axial shocks. Uh, one set of 10-3 stocks, one set of Capra stocks, and one set that came with a Rift. So those shocks are effectively unmodified. Of those 22, 21 sets, we're going to ignore these, uh, it's it's pretty much 40 weight aside from those the, the two guys that fall into other. Anything that is conventional, whether it be a desert lizard, whether it be the big spring, whether it be the small spring like SE shocks, it's, it's 40 weight. 40 weight seems to work across the weight range that most rigs fall into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up, before we even take this guy apart, because he is a portion of an It Came From The Workbench series of uh, with which I'm assuming regular viewers will be familiar. He needs, he needs new shocks. As I said, I have the full, I have the full option spring set. I, th oh, oh. I guess I didn't, I didn't even look through the back. I have two option spring sets. I can say to most folk out there, I think one option spring set will probably be all you need if you need option springs at all. But I buy tuning spring. If I buy a shock or a set of shocks, I pretty much buy tuning springs for it because it's never quite going to be right, particularly with RTRs. Traxxas gets close Element gets almost as close. Axial, in my experience, is just guessing most of the time, it feels like. I'm reaching back here. I mean, as this is, this is one of the crawler shock spring bins. So I, I don't know if there's an axial shock here that has the spring that came on it. Now, if you're getting... If you're getting really custom, 
with with stuff. I can understand that. Now the the, the spring rains aren't going to match, but I, I'm talking about like when when my Capra was just a Capra, the the springs weren't the springs weren't right. It was if memory serves. It was really oversprung in the rear and undersprung in the front. And that's just with the stock, with the factory weight distribution. And my Capra was built as a kit. But that doesn't change. I didn't I didn't go crazy custom on it from the get-go. I I built it as a as a Capra would be built. We've got three hole pistons all around. I am going to just sort of uh, converse my way through the assembly here, and, and you'll notice things like, am I holding anything? My hands, and I've definitely, scooting, I have definitely talked about this in the past. My hands are larger than average. That's not like a humble brag. It's just that like, like I don't have shack hands, but I do have hands of a size sufficient to make what I would classify as normal human operations difficult. I have, like, it will, and I've already, I've already, oh, there it is. I, I will lose things like Eclipse. I don't, I don't like Eclipse in any application because of this. I have things like this to go through fastener bins because I can't get, I can't get these things in it. What? I don't know what I touched and got all greasy, but. I'm greasy already. So I'm going to make an uh, I'm going to make an effort right now to get at least one of these started and then we'll move to a Gmaid and they're all going to use Eclipse I, I have to. They're all going to use Eclipse to retain the piston. These do indeed appear to be bespoke to, I mean, they'll, they'll be the same size as like a GT S piston or a Trexus Ultra piston. I think it's Trexus Ultra piston, but they do appear to, they, they look like Delrin to me. They look like machine Delrin to me. So it, with your draft techs, you will be getting fancy pistons. I finally... Finally, they, they, I, I ran out. Uh, I know there's a lot of options out there, but I ran out of associated green slime long ago. So I've been lubricating seals while assembling shocks with just shock oil. Get a little shock oil on the on the piston on the, on the O rings. I've been doing it that way for for a good long while. And I finally decided I need to get enough stuff to make the coupon. So I'm gonna order some shock. Lube, they call it lube? O-ring grease. I'm gonna order some O-ring grease. So I, I made an attempt to get, now listen to it go. I made an attempt to get Team Associated and, uh, and uh, they were out of stock as well. I, I must say, the the brain is a little rusty. I know, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think, if I remember right, it's been a while since I built uh, a Traxxas Ultra. It's, it, has, it has definitely been a minute. So I think the easiest way for me is probably going to be to be able to, to take the piston that's already built what I need, I need like a cotton ball, everybody. Uh, I would like to hold that in place. I can't, I'm trying to fit my finger in there. That's not gonna work. All right, I think we've, uh, I think we've got, I think we've got something serviceable. The, oh! <laughs> we just get, we, we get a little bit in there because we got it, we got it. Boy, I really leaned on that. We've got it. Squeeze it down from the top anyway. I found. I I I mean, get a pan of ice, everybody. If you don't own a, if you don't own a pan of ice, buy one. You will use it so much. You will ask yourself, 
how did I never have a pan of ice? The the nylon or uh, polypropylene, whatever the heat resistant jaws comes with a, a, a number of different jaws. The heat resistant jaws basically don't come out of mine because you put a battery plug in there to solder it or a four millimeter bullet, you just clamp it straight into the vise. You go and you don't have to worry about transferring heat to the tool that's holding the part that you're trying to solder. So we're clamping, I don't know what this came with, some RTR. Hey, look at that. Because I like to load. You're watching a person flail. We go the little one. And then we go, um, do they do they still call them X rings? No, they just call them O rings. And then we go big spacer. And then we go this guy. We listen to the wind trying to knock the building down. Sadly, I don't have a wind gauge out in this building. I only have a I only have a, an airspeed meter in the house. And we we get to this this part, the, the snap ring. I, I've got snap ring pliers. These are the wrong direction, but I have I have the other ones as well. The problem is the snap ring pliers are designed for like, you know, snap rings, not these microscopic things. Boy, getting this to focus is not easy. So what I have to use to assemble things like this is a pair of tweezers that have been ground down on a sander to give them a very small point. Then I can try to get, see, now I can, I can hold it like that. This is why I like to assemble it with the shaft in place because then if the thing does that and pops off of the tweezers, it doesn't fly away never to be seen again. So I try to haphazardly get this thing under the little lip, almost got one side in, and I knew that this was going to be a problem. I will stab myself with tweezers multiple times before this is done because they are very sharp. And this right here is the kind of thing that makes you not want to do this kind of thing. I got the first one in already. I cannot get this to focus. 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 I got the first one in. And once they're in, you know, you don't you don't you don't really have much to worry about. Oh, now it's focused. In a crawler application, as I've said, the, 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 to me, as long as it doesn't leak, and Traxxas Ultras, Traxxas is, disregard whatever you might think about Traxxas, they make a good shock, all the way down to plastic bodied Ultras, to GTS, R's, GTS's, whatever. I cannot get this one to set. So this, to me, this isn't a deal breaker, because, almost, almost this has nothing to do with the shock itself you can i i note from the yeah it's popping apart you can i note from the uh dlx Fab website you can just have them assemble them you can spend the i think it's 10 bucks a pair 10 bucks a set i'm not sure but you can pay a nominal fee and have them assemble them for you once you're once you're to here it you're you know you're there you film with oil and unlike most crawler shocks, using damn it, using all ultra parts, uh, they're bladdered, so you are actually you're, these are non emulsion, and pretty much every crawler shock that I've experienced, if the shock has a bleeder port or an O ring at the top, and well, if the shock doesn't have a bladder, it's an emulsion shock. So. These are a little trickier to get full. I'll get to filling them once I have all four of the snap rings in place. But they're a little trickier to get the fill level right because you don't want to build pack into a crawler shack. I'll talk about that in a minute as well. But th this, whoever ends up getting these shocks in the fleet will be, I think, the only one not running an emulsion shock, which is a, a shock that has an air oil mixture. You cannot build an air-free shock unless that shock has a bladder in it because 
That sounds fun, doesn't it? The there'll, there'll, there'll be an air gap between the top of the cap and the bladder, and the compression of the fluid will make that that pocket boop 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 boop. Now, see, most companies go with uh, emulsion shocks because over time, shocks are going to leak air in either through the seals, through the caps, somewhere. Air, air will find a way to get in, and as the air contaminates the oil it's going to affect the shock action. Now, with an emulsion shock, you can have it all full of oil. You can have it full of air in there. And as long as the piston itself doesn't rise up above and into the air pocket. Now, see, it can't here because that can only go to there and then it would hit the bladder. So in an emulsion shock, if the piston goes up into that just whole thing of air, it's really going to aerate the oil, and then the oil is going to behave differently. So in, in a bladdered shock, a sealed shock, is a better shock, but they are more maintenance intensive because when air gets in, then they don't work as good. So we, we, we're, we're going to see. I, I, don't, I don't worry about the snap ring thing. I'm looking through the clear plastic in the front of the G-Made bag, and uh, I'm going to guess that little guy, the D-ring. I'm going to guess those D-rings are how they retain the bottom of their cartridge. So it's a similar situation. I'm going to put these in, and then we'll, 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 we'll get the age-old shock station out and start filling these up. The fourth one really caught me off guard and just went together. I didn't I didn't have to fight it as much as I did the other three. Little you know, the red light fever takes over and I lose the ability to perform simple functions if I'm being recorded while doing it. So well we can do it better this way. Ah uh, yes. Ye old shock station now, the little tiny holes that I'm putting these in, those are more recent than the shock station itself. Like these fit low C8s, the big holes in the back. These fit most, the you know, the 12, 13 millimeter shocks, ultras, GTRs, stuff like that. We've been, we've been using that glued together piece of, uh, those couple pieces of ABS with the provision to put a Dixie cup in there. A long time. There is a there's a shock top, and that is the part that I'm most I'm most excited about. Also, the shocks are big bore, so they're the same as old tricks as big bores. But I think there won't be the interference issues with some shocks that there are with some shock towers. For instance, if you want to run anything other than an incision shock on a vehicle with vanquished towers, you almost always have to attack it with a Dremel, the tower, not the shock, because they, they just won't fit. They, they rub against the inside of the tower because the little, the little vertical tube where the body mount goes in, if the, if the wall of it were like one millimeter thinner, it, it would fit. But they made things for, you know, the, the, the OE market can't account for every possible aftermarket permutation that we, that we, we as a group, throw at stuff. I neglected to do something that I wanted to do, which was see what size hole is in the piston. So I'm going to fill... Oh, that's bad. That's bad. That's messy. That's that's real messy. I'm going to fill three of these. Then I'm going to take this guy. And it will take me a moment, but the next thing you know, I'll be like, this hole is this size. The three holes in the piston are, I'm going to say with some degree of confidence, metric. Because... I took them to the drill drift, and they are s they are smaller than anything I've got, and my drift goes down to a number 60, which is 040, so I started digging through the bits, 
and found a bit that fit. Found a bit that fit in in with the pin vise. This thing, which it's definitely not going to be able to focus on. It looks like a hair. O thirty nine. O thirty nine. Known to the rest of the world as one millimeter. Well, it's like point nine nine millimeters, which. I mean, I bought my caliper at the Harbor Freight, so if it says 0.99, it's probably a millimeter. We're going to cycle these a little to pull the the low air bubbles out. In many cases, what I will do is set the piston at the halfway mark when I fill it with oil. That way, when you pull the piston down for the first time, uh, just one big bubble will come out. And as I say, these are not emulsion so we have to build them a little more slowly, and we have to build them in a way to try to ensure that as little air as possible is is infused into the oil. I don't know how well it'll, how well is this going to show up? Yeah, you can't really, you can't really see the bubbles. Oh, I saw that one pop. So it's just, with an emulsion shop, shock, you just, you squirt the oil in, you put the lid down, and if you're hoping it has a bleeder cap, and by a bleeder cap, I mean with a cap with a screw, not just like a hole in the cap, the type with the hole in the cap. Axial has gone to that on the new 10-3 shocks, and that's probably my least favorite way to do it because it's super messy. And if it's the type that has a cap with a hole in it, it's generally the type where there's the plastic cap, the chuck top that the that the pivot ball goes into, that little guy, and then a metal cap that goes over the outside of that. Rift shocks are like that. There's a handful of shocks out there that are like that. They are really difficult to get to seal, and they're really easy to get to leak. So with, uh, I got these all pretty darn close, except this one. You generally want to be about a millimeter down from the top. You don't. You don't want the the meniscus up at the top where it's like doming over because the bladder is going to, the bladder points down like that. This this is for anyone that's never built a bladder shark. The bladder points down, so that goes like that. And when you push the bladder down, you don't want to see a ton of oil. Should just be a little wet on the front. Yep, yeah, see, it's not, it's not fully wet. We're, we're trying to trap minimal air but even in a perfectly built sealed shock, there's, there's, you'd have to build it under oil to not to not get any air in with the oil. So in the spirit of sacrifices for art, we will uh, we'll take a bladder. I prefer putting the bladder into the cap. I thought I, I, I use a little Q-tip works. Whatever you want to get it down, there'll be a little land below the threads to get the to get the cat the bladder into the cap. And getting it in is super fun. Don't use a screwdriver. Don't use anything sharp. You will poke a hole right in the bladder. A lot of time you can get lucky and it'll go down. With just, you just push it with your finger and the bladder will go down to the cap. But I am trying to do this on camera, and it is never going to do that. I think, I think, I think I've got it. I think I've got it properly seated. So I think this guy might be a little low. So for the sake of full, we, uh, we, we, we're gonna screw this guy together. Goes together pretty easy. And you usually get a little bit of drizzle on the side. I didn't get any. So when I cycle, oh, I'm gonna, I think I got it perfect. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't push back out. So in an attempt to make that shock aerate, uh, I accidentally, I accidentally built it right. Well, <laughs> well, we'll we'll try we'll try a second one. Yeah, I think that bladder went in pretty well as well. Just one little edge of it is caught on a thread. Yep, that bladder is in as well. That guy looks like he's got the exact same amount of oil. 
again because the bladder is pressing down towards the oil. We'll see if we get any introduction of air. Cycle it up. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a shock expert, but I have somehow accidentally uh, built two shocks exactly the way I want them. Just eyeballing the oil. I mean, I guess it's that old thing. This is, this is a, this is a groundhog day principle. I'm not the best person at building these. I just, I guess I've done it enough. This one's, no, it wasn't. I was going to say this one's fighting me a little. And then it popped right in. So will we go, will we go four for four in, ooh, this one's got a lot of, this is the one I drizzled juice when I was filling it. How'd we do? Yep, okay. Three for three. We have just one remaining. And I can see from the top of this one, this one's a little low. Like, literally, that was one drip low. Let me get the bladder seated into the cap. Get the bladder in. The oil level looks, uh, as I hold it far out of frame here, it looks about it looks about right. But I felt like the other one was low. Well. I, so again, I think that over time I have filled, I'm going to, oh, by the way, for, for the initial installation and testing purposes on this, we're just going to go with the, the stock springs that come with the shocks. I guess, I guess I've built enough of these and not, not, I've never built, uh, Grab text before, but I've built enough shocks over time that I don't know. I I accidentaled my way into building all four correctly. I also realize that this episode is going to be far too long to do G maids versus uh, draft text. So this is the draft tech episode, everybody. We're gonna we're gonna not do an hour and twenty minutes. So we'll get the draft text done. And we'll get these. Well, yeah. 40. I don't know. Then at the same time, it actually feels pretty good. Eye to eye on the ultra shorts is. I mean, let, let's call it 80 millimeters. It might be 81 millimeters. So these are indeed 80s. I think I have the freedom to install them whichever way I see fit. If possible, I install a shock, quote unquote, upside down like this. With a bladdered shock, it's not going to matter as much. These are gonna be a little, these are gonna be a little slow. I now worry about a little over damp, but with the kooky weight distribution on that guy, it might not be a problem. In an order, in an effort to expedite, ooh, what? the wind has stopped for at least a moment. In an effort to expedite, I'm just going to put the rest of these together, and then we'll we'll get them we'll get them on the rig. All right, all right, everybody, we, we skipped a step. We've we've installed these 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 are in place. I went with upside down because there's more rod end showing. The cup was really close to the edge there, and speaking of really close to the edge there. The, the hardware that comes with it, you got these guys, regular, what are we talking, 5.7, but they're the old style, so they're like 6.2, 6.3 millimeters across. Pretty much everything, like, this might be situationally applicable. Stuff like axials are almost exclusively, like, anything that's double shear, like that right there, those are 5.7 by 7 and I want to say Traxxas uses 7.5s. Anyway, what you're most likely going to have to do is get your little shock tool out. I hope you have a shock tool. Punch the ball out of the shock that was on the rig. Install them at the end. Like the, the top mount points, they don't matter, right? You can just use a shorter screw. But I had to get different spacers because the spacers weren't right. I was replacing an aftermarket shock with another aftermarket shock. So 
everything didn't just slap on there, nor would I expect it to. So these are the tires that I, st the wheel and tire combo that I still believe is not. This isn't the guy, but it's, it's what we got. The Colonel will obtain some new wheels and some new tires at some point. But today he's going to test the drive techs out in the hurricane wind tunnel. The, the, the Christmas microphone actually did a pretty good job of isolating the absolutely horrific amount of wind that we were experiencing last time. How are we sitting? Oh, did you see that? We're sitting a lot of bit front low. Yeah, the front bumper. Let's uh, let's have Victor tell us. The top of the front bumper is three and a half inches off the ground, and the top of the rear bumper is four and a quarter inches off the ground. I don't know if this guy will he get lower. No. So we're gonna run it like this. That's this just how it is. But the spring rate in the front, we 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 need a spring kit on this guy because he needs to sit right about there, right there, right about there, and those those springs can't hold this front end up. The flex is now pretty much where I want it to be. He had way too much on nineties. And we are gonna put a little bit of weight on right now, actually, as we have to put on a battery in order to head out into the wind. Radio! Uh, hey, over five volts, that's all we need. see what's happening now <laughs> yeah there's a uh, there's some issues with the amount of droop in the front you'll hear um, yeah the front is now drooping farther than I would like you see it the, the corner jacking up what's happening is and th this is not this has nothing to do with the shocks but steer link how it's clearing the front link right there well if this has any load on it 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 hits it i don't know how much of a problem it's going to be i mean i think i can actually actually let me look at this let me give me a second let me look at this i think i can actually remedy that before we have to go outside yeah i'm gonna fix that but the ne uh, i i just gotta I got to I got to reconfigure up here in the front. And then we should be good. That it's crazy how low that front end is sitting, but you know, yeah, I don't know. It might it might work. The suspension feels amazing good. Uh let me fix that and then let's let's uh let's step out into the wind tunnel. There, there really is no place to escape the wind, everybody. And on days like this, I find I am allergic to the atmosphere. The drive back, you know, honestly, it felt pretty good. I don't know if that's just that the oil weight is better. Oh, that was good. And as I've said, I don't think the lug on the scaler is super suited to his new condition of the scaler. Dates back to when he was a 10 3. I, I want to get into a spot where we can see what kind of hop we have. If it, uh. Oh my god, I thought I thought he was going to pull it right there. There's going to be a lot of sniffling. Well, I mean, okay. Here's, here's, the, here's the short of the long of it. I don't know if this is the the shocks. I don't know if it's the 
there it is. There it is. So these tires were not great his last time out to the point that I never really felt like I, I could get a picture of what the handling of the rig was like. I don't, yeah, so there's the little, little load unload, but we kinda, kinda met. I got the front bumper augered in, there we go. Pulls up there. Little belly hang and across. Okay, all right. So I, I did this on purpose because I wanted to look at draft techs. I wanted to see how these feel compared to what, I mean, I guess we could definitely call an established baseline. Wholly untuned chassis. I just picked the shock positions on the, on the, on the chassis that looked close to what I thought I needed. The scaler was not, did not seem well suited. And you know what, right now, they're pretty good. Right there. Right there. Okay. We're, we're gonna have to go, we're gonna have to get some side hill. Also, much of the last installment that the Colonel was featured in, I removed the front bumper because it got hung on everything. And now the front end is sitting way lower. And it does not appear to matter in any way as my approach angle is somehow magically improved. Shorter shock, lower front end. really sidle this in up here. Get that bumper off. Okay. You can see the rear pumpkin. Well, maybe you can. The the rear differential is is hung in there pretty bad. Got it over. Cut back. Get that bumper off. Now I got the now I got the rear bumper stuck in. Get a little back. There we go. Rear bumper still hung in. Yeah, I I definitely this is this is sideways related to a drab tech breakdown. I, I agree with what folks have said that I don't think the the or the layout of this rig, the skid forward, this is other stuff other than the shock stuff. I don't think it's conducive to a full fender body. Once again, I feel like my good friend, the man in the middle, 40 weight, seems to be pretty good. Much of that high side rear tire. Let's see how that. I, I, I'm angling in here much straighter than I thought I would have been able to. Driver's front lifting pretty good, but coming back down. Now here's a turn down ordinarily. Like, see, this is foam stuff. So how much? can the, the shock do to account for that foam? Like we're watching the rear end slide, slide, slippity slide, but it does not feel unstable to me. The 80s were huge. 90 to 80 is huge on this rig. If you're looking at the Enjora or whoever, oh, here comes some Gus, uh, skid forward, chassis from Amazon. First off, don't try to put AR45Ps under it. Put something that can be four-linked in the front end. Make your life a lot easier. But I would say no matter what that axle is, I think an 80 millimeter shock is the shock. I'm, the glare coming off the hood is blinding me. It's just, it's planted right there. Okay, now, now we're getting into a little bit of a, a spot where it's getting light. I'm trying to look at it in such a way that I don't catch that glare off the hood. Scalers on the rear sliding a good bit to the right. But I'm at like full lock. Yeah, even with that cutback, did not did not get loose. And through there with the turn down, really light on that tire, but yeah, yeah. 
rough surface action here. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, back up, back up. really are so I wouldn't say that this is an is a, an instance of me coming around to it I like I prefer the small spring on a shock versus the big you know huge coil because we don't need the big huge coil we're, we're not taking it off kicker jumps we need enough suspension to control the flex. Oh, that was brilliant. And I think most importantly, the shocks are in, are effectively invisible. I don't I don't notice them at all. They're it's smooth. This comes down to quality of manufacture. Like everything is machined. The shafts are machined, the pistons are machined, the bodies are machined. So everything goes together real nice. This thing is driving now like it doesn't have a full fender body and a front bumper that gets caught on stuff. Now, if it had a little bit more suitable of a tire right here, I think I could get that pull to the left. over yeah okay so I don't know how much of a wrap-up I can do out here I don't know how much wheeling additional wheeling is necessary oh it's so ladies and gentlemen cats and kittens the word of the day is maneuverability and I have dramatically increased the maneuverability of this vehicle making no other structural changes other than changing the shocks and i'm gonna i'm gonna drill that down more where there's less wind on the journey back i i really got into the, i got into the thinking place of essentially what's on here is a hundred dollar set of shocks you're, you're basically looking at $50 a pair with the tuning springs and the shipping and the tax and all the other things that the internet brings to us. So I, I get to that, that bottom line, you know. I've said it before, I guarantee I will say it again. Money is never not an object. Money is an object. And we, we, we make decisions, compromises, we make whatever based on the cost of something, whether or not we're willing to pay for it. I was given these by, again, a fantastic example of a human being, to test and to give my honest opinions of them. My opinion of them as if I had to put my own money down on them to buy them. Would I buy Deluxe Fab Dravtex? Yes. I th I don't know if this is a is a sign of progress. I don't know if this is a sign of personal advancement. But the next time I'm looking for a set of shocks, I'm probably not going to buy these. I buy these because they don't leak very much. They they meet the qualifications. They don't leak. They fit, and that, you know, the, the unsaid, but the unspoken but known, they're cheap. It's the same reason I bought these RSDs, which I will build, be building shortly. Inexpensive, $50 a set. So we're talking double what I would ordinarily spend. But everything here is machined. So they go together remarkably well. The only thing 
that would go into the con column if up at the top it says deluxe fab drive techs and you've got pros over here and you've got cons over here in the con column to me pointing at myself they're they're kind of expensive relatively speaking and you know snap rings but the snap ring is also kind of a plus that bottom's not going to leak that that o-ring pack is in there and on a vehicle like this i 40 weight seems great i will have to take these bottoms off i am going to look through the spring pack to see what like say the next rate is i think these are probably soft what came on there needs to go to like a medium because it just it just collapses there's a lot of weight out here in the front especially with skid forward but tuning options are not crazy expensive hundred dollars a set let's just let's just call it that yeah you can get in a little lower but by the time you're done you're looking at a hundred dollars a set is the hundred dollars a set worth more than the fifty dollars a set that you would pay for desert lizards well you can't get desert lizards in 80s and i think there are far more people out there than even they know that are running a 90 and would experience a perform a a, a note an immediately noticeable performance increase when going from a 90 to an 80. 80 might be my favorite shock length there's only half a dozen rigs in here right now i think right abouts running 80s i'm all i i would almost come out and say but i i i, I back away from that precipice of saying if the rigs got portals put 80s on it because that will bring your cg back down that you so you'll still have the ground clearance but the body can come down if the if the center chassis comes down 10 millimeters it's not going to matter because the pumpkin height didn't change. The breakover, I don't think it's going to impact the breakover to a sufficient degree that it's going to, uh, the pros outweigh the cons. Just like with these shocks, the pros outweigh the cons because as I sit here and look at them, having just recently built them and just recently wheeled them, the only cons are the cost and snap rings. So snap rings, you're not gonna have to do a lot. We, we discount that. If we can move past $100 a set, effectively $25 per corner, then, then, then we're in the clear and I would recommend them because if you go on A-Main or something and you wanna buy a set of just say element shocks or TRX four shocks not from a teardown house, or anything else beyond the economy shocks, you're gonna pay 80 plus dollars a set anyway. So these are actually priced below that. I wanna say they're like $39 a pair. So for the sake of argument, let's say the element shocks, because they're gonna come with whatever springs, maybe they're not gonna match. This is a direct across if you're not getting the shocks on a rig, if you have to buy them. If you're buying aftermarket shocks, don't buy elements or even even Traxxas GTS. We use Traxxas GTS because they're fantastic for the price, because they're inexpensive, they're well built. These are all Traxxas guts. Traxxas makes a fantastic shock, as I said some time ago. But with these, you're getting a machined and built shock. They are so, they are so smooth. And that smoothness isn't brought to us simply by the fact that I, I lucked into buying the big bottle of 40 weight and filling everything with 40. That smoothness is because the parts are all machined. So the piston fits the body and the shafts fit the pistons and the shafts fit the, the O-ring pack. Everything works, this is a concert. I mean, they're, they're, they're good. I need, to, I need to futz with the spring rate, I think. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy forward two holes and see how the rate falls there. I think it still needs to go one rate up in the front or potentially two rates in the front and one rate in the rear, but that's down the road and that has nothing to do with a quick view of drive techs. 
I think the Delux Fab Drought Techs are great. I think for the money, oh, man, it would be really hard to do better. I am a big proponent of putting the little springs like this on Element Shocks now that Element has started offering them with the SE. But at the end of the day, it costs you about 30 bucks to do that conversion. You got to buy the, the, the little plastic hardware kit and you got to buy the spring option pack. Costs about 30 bucks. Price might come down, price might go up, who knows. But I advise, I, I recommend that to people because they would already have element shocks. You just throw it on the element shocks you already have. I'm not saying go out and buy element shocks and then buy all the parts to put on element shocks to convert them to the little compact spring. I think these look super clean. I think the shocks are lighter because the, the, the weight is down because you're not toting a big spring around. It's got a nice short body. I like these shocks. I wanna get another set and see how they go on another build. And I still, I still have not come to a conclusion as to whether or not they are going to stay here on the kernel. I, I want to build the G-Maids before that. So there'll be a G-Maid. What are they? RSDs? There'll be an RSD quick view coming up soon. I'm not trying to be overly negative in advance without trying it. I am indeed going to build the, the RSDs as they come. I'm going to... I'm even going to use that stuff with the with the cracked cap on the oil and everything. I'm surprised the bottom of the bag's not full of oil. We will see. We will see what those 80s look like. But as it stands today at the conclusion of this episode, if I had spent the money on this, I I wouldn't I would not regret it at all. I I don't I don't think the the G maids are going to manage to be as smooth and as nice as these. They're really nice. So if you're on the fence about them anybody and you're putting aside money towards a rig maybe don't buy the expensive beadlocks get yourself some amazon beadlocks and take that money you save and put them towards this because i think a wheel is a wheel but now i think a shock might be something else this is my first set really real, tr honestly and truly this is my first set of shocks that are like they're just they're made they're not the non-mass produced, let's say that. Non-mass produced shocks. They're really good. I don't I I, I I don't feel I don't feel regrets about it. Even if it were my money. So there you go. I mean make the decisions on your own. I know to 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 many, myself included, hundred dollars for a set of shocks for your toy car seems like a lot. But at the same time, it's not unusual to spend $100 on a servo or $100 on a set of tires or $100 on a motor or $100 on anything. $100 used to mean a lot more, I think, is where I'm going in this conclusion. So thanks for watching this one, everybody. If you have any questions about the draft text that I didn't address, something about the assembly, something about the installation, anything about them, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, like if you like to subscribe if you haven't we do offer channel memberships the the core group uh shout out to the core group sorry i haven't offered uh any uh members only content in the past what i think we're going on two weeks now i just got back from disneyland not bragging uh the wife and i went for our anniversary and i walked 19 miles in two days I don't think I need to say anything else about that. So, again, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, please do tune in for the next one to see how the G-Maids compare. I, I will not be able to mentally separate uh, G-Made from DraftTech. I'm going to make those 80s, unbolt these, bolt the other ones on. That'll be in the next video. You'll, you'll get to see DraftTech straight up against G-Made. So, I'm not saying don't pull the trigger on the DraftTechs right now. Like, as soon as this video is over, don't be like, ordered. But... We will get an apples versus apples comparison with regards to that. And if anybody thinks that it might be advisable, if it's something somebody would like to see, let me know between when this is up and when this is up. I can pull a set of incision 80s off one of the Phoenix and we can do three-way shootout. I think the incisions cost about the same as these, and I think just based on the rod ends and the fitment ability, I would lean towards the DravTech over buying the incisions. The incisions are great that they come with vanquished vehicles, but if I was buying them a la carte, 
I, I can almost certainly right now say that it's it's these. And that's that. Thus ends Carl Canyon quick view of Deluxe Fab Draft Techs. I mean, a thumbs up in spite of the cost. The cost is the only thing that would make that would that I would balk at. And I'm, I'm coming around to it. But decide for yourself. And while you're deciding for yourself, everybody, be sure to have a good one, as we always recommend. And I, I got to go eat a sandwich or something. So we will we will unquestionably see you in the next one.